months later. Matthew, you know this is the part of social distancing I'm actually liking. It's you and me recording from two different studios. Look at all the space I have here. Tell me about it. I love it. I just wake up in the morning, I do my hair, put on my shirt, and step in front of the camera. It's good. Just please don't stand up. Yeah, let's just keep that <laughs> that way. It's just too convenient being at home and getting online. And as you know, before I used to always just shop online and. This little mouse here was a very expensive wallet for me, and it's just gotten a lot more expensive. Well, when you are spending virtual money, it almost feels like it's not your own money. No, it's just too easy. They make it too easy. It's dangerous. You know, believe it or not, I was an impulse buyer like you at some point. I have shoes that cost more than a drone, and I bought those within five seconds. Well, I believe the impulse buying part. I just don't believe that you stop buying shoes. Why would you do that? That's why I stopped spending my parents' money and、uh, started spending、uh. my own. At that point,、mm. shoes weren't as important. They don't make you money like drones. Oh,、will. that's the difference between buying an asset and then incurring an expense. So if you are an impulse buyer like Matthew, then you can basically stop watching the video and go hit your favorite online store. But if you are more of the smart buyer like myself, then this video is to answer all your questions before buying a DJI drone. So Matthew, since it only takes you ten seconds to buy a drone. What do you get to check in that ten seconds? <laughs>、uh, you know, the only thing I look at right away is the specs of the camera. They just have to meet my needs and my application for what I do. That's because you already know what you're using it for, for real estate or for marketing. You know, the thing I actually ask my team、uh, before they come to me for budget approval for buying a drone, I always ask them why are they buying this unit, and then they also have to justify why、um, this unit actually meets the requirements. They actually have to look at the full specification. Like you said, camera is important, but you know, for business applications, to me, the drone size is also important because whether or not it's travel friendly, right? Some people like to look at the aircraft specs right after camera, but to me, I actually like to look at the navigation specs after the camera specification because navigation features actually help to improve the safety. Of the drone, and again, from the operation perspective, you know, safety to me on the business side, it's super important. Yeah, I mean, you make good points because, like we said, you could technically buy one drone that is two thousand dollars more, but yet the two thousand dollar cheaper one could totally do what you need. So your return on investment obviously is going to be a lot greater. So I mean, those are valid points. I, obviously, after I buy the drone based on the camera, I will then go through all the other specifications. Make sure something like weather, you know, weather. Make sure it can handle certain temperatures. Yeah, there's actually a long spec sheet. If we look at the let's say Mavic 2、uh, on DJI side and their specs, we can see obviously DJI seems to agree with you because they listed the camera specifications first, and then after that we have aircraft information and then we have the navigation features. Now, looking at DJI website, I just noticed something. Do you see the categories on the top, where it says consumer, professional, and、uh, enterprise? I find they're kind of confusing for a lot of people. When you you know you're looking for a drone, what category do I look under? For someone who already know what they're buying, that's a different story. But for someone, let's say, who's just browsing through different units, I do find it confusing.、Um, and I actually had、uh, quite a few clients and students asking, you know, I want to buy a Mavic Two, and it's under the consumer category. Does it mean I can't use it for professional work? Yeah, that's the confusing part. And then if we look at under professional, there's Inspire Two, but Inspire Two is really mostly for filming purpose. Then we move on to the enterprise tab. Here we have, let's say, Matrix 200.、Uh, but I know a lot of a、uh, one-person team who provide drone service, who just contract, right, providing service as an、uh, inspection or for survey, and they run a Matrix 210 unit. So it's not necessarily just for an、uh, enterprise company. It could just be still one-person team. Yeah, I mean, their their you know navigation system on the website is kind of confusing, but ultimately, like you just said, if you know what drone you're looking for and what your needs are, you know, you just do a search for that drone、yeah. and you're gonna find it. So basically, don't get confused by DJI's categories, and I、yeah. suspect it, they've got to do with some kind of sales level versus the actual application of the drone. Absolutely, I agree. And you know the reason I don't often go on DJI website, it really comes down to where we buy the drone. And I know for you, you mostly just buy directly from from the manufacturer, right? I buy it from whoever has it in stock first, and usually that's the manufacturer. 
for me, I actually prefer to buy a local retailer,、uh, especially for us because we have a corporate account with a local retailer. It's called Vistec, and they are basically the pro photo and video retailer. So we buy our camera gear, we buy our lighting gear, you know, all our studio supplies we buy from them. And with the corporate account, I just find to me if I'm gonna give the money to someone. I'd prefer giving it to someone I know or having a relationship with, even just you know part of supporting your community businesses, right? I mean that's very noble of you, Yifei. For me, it's just a matter of how fast can I get what I ordered to my door. Oh, maybe I didn't mention that for corporate account, we actually get a good discount as well. <laughs> so not so much on noble. Maybe it also comes down to cost.、Um, yeah. But ultimately, you know, I, I do find it's preference. Even if both are charging the same amount, I would still prefer. You know, like I said, if I'm going to spend the money, I'd rather give it to someone that I actually know. Now speaking of where to buy. Did you know that for the enterprise models, you actually can't buy directly from DJI website? Well, believe it or not, I've tried adding that item to cart a few times and unsuccessfully didn't find out what the price was. You have to buy them through an enterprise dealer, and all the pricing they're all custom quote. It's not the same across the board. I'm interested to find out actually how much that is. So if you have that information, please send it over to me. Actually, I did go to our local enterprise dealer, but not for the point of getting the price. I went because I heard a rumor on DJI No Fly Zone. You know how much I hate the DJI No Fly Zone. Oh, I know. <laughs> And I heard for the enterprise account, you can actually get that restriction lifted. Now, unfortunately, that's not true. No, you'd have to. The, the enterprise dealer basically confirmed you have to prove you work for the public response sector. Whether police, search and rescue, or fire, and even for them,、uh, they can only have it temporarily lifted for a period of time. So it's actually not the same across the board. Well, that's one of the reasons why I tried adding that item to cart because I heard the same thing. So now the other thing, I also know you were interested in the after sale care because you were complaining on the consumer、oh. side. Yeah, it、terrible. was difficult getting through the after sale, whether it's service department or warranty. But with the enterprise dealer,、uh, because they actually get trained by DJI, so they're almost like your professional sales support team.、Uh, so you do get the after sales support, whether on maintenance, even on training,、uh, on warranty, on the equipment support, they provide that whole package. So it's a little more service oriented, I would like to think. Well, I would hope so because you're catering more to that professional enterprise companies or you know businesses. So. Yeah, and the one thing they mentioned was they said for the enterprise side,、um, choosing the accessories or different options for the drone gets a lot more complicated because on the consumer side, the accessories are readily listed basically on DJI website, so it's easier to actually choose and pick which ones work. I know you have kind of your own list of treasure box that you always pick when you're buying a new drone. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because you know one of the items that I was looking at for the Enterprise or for the Mavic was like you know a little in infrared. I was wondering, can I add it to my Mavic? Because I wanted to buy. I you know the the general things that I buy all the time are extra batteries, extra propellers. You know, the, the little controllers for the remote control in case you drop or lose ones. So those are the things that are necessities that I feel that you want. Maybe a car charger in case you're driving somewhere you need that that backup battery、um, to charge batteries. Those are the necessities you need to have, and then obviously stuff like the filters. That you want to add in later on. So you basically have、uh, a bunch of things you can buy directly from the manufacturer, and then third party third ones,、parties. like you said, filters or even cases. I know you tend to actually buy cases from third party rather than directly from the manufacturer. Yeah, I mean the manufacturer, the case that comes with the drone is nice, but I just find that there's other companies making better cases. So usually, you know, a month or two out, you're going to find some pretty unique cases and different items, or you know, even filters, like you said. And I actually liked them、um, from the manufacturer that they didn't actually make all of the accessories. They actually left room for third-party manufacturers to come in and make different accessories. I find this a good ecosystem they're actually supporting. Yeah, I agree. And honestly, from my experience, you know, as you know,、um, they don't tend to have a lot of the accessories readily available when they release the drones. The third-party companies actually do. And that's part of the reason of supporting that ecosystem. I think having variety is always a key to equipment sector. Matthew, you know what I just realized looking at the buying notes we went through. I have a feeling there's gonna be a new checklist. I I realized this is exactly the list of questions I ask my tech team、I、when they're submitting、it. a purchase request. <laughs> I knew it. Because、okay. I always, you know, I always ask them why are you buying something. 
And then I always ask them to justify, okay, this product you want to buy, does it actually meet your requirements? And obviously pricing, you know, is there a return on investment? Am I going to make my profit from the product? And then from there, believe it or not, for a lot of businesses, they're actually required to list three sources where they're actually buying the product and service. So I, you know, for me, I'm a workflow person. I really like that because it's forcing whoever wants to buy, it's forcing them to go to do a little better research, right? Yeah, maybe finding homework. a better, exactly. Maybe yeah. finding a better source with lower pricing. Mm -hmm. You never know. Or availability, so they, yeah. Or availability, exactly. Yeah. And then from there, they can list all of the accessories because it's, it's never just buying from one source, right? You may be buying the drone Multiple from some place and then yeah. exactly accessories from different places. So I think this is perfect for me to come up with our purchase request form. And for anyone who's watching the video, if you're interested in getting a copy for your team, check out the descriptions down below. Tech team, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Wait, did you just say I'm not a smart buyer? No, I didn't say that. I mean, I may have implied that, but I didn't say uh -huh. that. All right.